Welcome back! Kinda interesting, you can actually resume straight from the launcher. There's a resume button there. But it does still show you the splash screen for the game, it's just when you then hit any key to continue it loads. Kinda weird, I would've just expected um, it to take you straight here. Alright, on to the fun part. We're on the Normandy now. Yes, everything that's not combat related is the fun part. For me, anyway. I actually quite like the combat in Mass Effect, all three of them. Three got it the best, but uh, I don't mind one at all. But, uh, you know, still not a huge fan of shooter games, so... Nobody is in Liara's room. The room is entirely pointless until Liara shows up. Replenish Metagel. I don't know what that did, except it gave me a codex entry. I guess I was full on Metagel. Didn't I, like, nearly die in the first mission? Or did I actually die? I know I nearly died near the end. I don't know if I actually died. Glad to see you're okay, Commander. Commander, I'm glad to see you're okay. Losing Jenkins was hard on the crew, and... I'm glad we didn't lose you, too. Things were pretty rough down there. Yeah, you never get used to seeing dead civilians. Doesn't seem right somehow. But at least you stopped Saren from wiping out the whole colony. Yep, yeah, I, I think you could say that it doesn't seem right. I couldn't have done it without you. We're Marines. We stick together. And I'm just sorry that we lost Jenkins. Um, in this game I must be careful that I don't accidentally romance him. <laughs> this game is not as explicit with the conversation options that lead to romance. Yeah, I wish I could have done something to save him. I was there. You did everything right. It was just bad luck. It's been a hell of a shakedown, Cruz. Our first mission ends with one Spectre killing another. The Citadel Council's not going to be happy about that. Probably use it to lever more concessions out of the Alliance. You've got a good grasp of the situation. You a career man? Yeah, a lot of biotics are. We're not restricted, but we sure don't go undocumented. May as well get a paycheck for it. Besides, my father served. I made him proud when I enlisted. Eventually. But is that why you're here? Because of your family? Um, I guess so, since we're a spacer. I was a regular Navy brat. I got a little more noteworthy than the folks expected. Oh, that's right, a coos. I imagine that bought you any post in the fleet. Word is we're heading for the Citadel, ma'am. Can you, uh, tell me why? The captain hopes the ambassador can get an audience with the council. Tell them what Saren's been up to. Makes sense. They'd probably like to know he's not working for them anymore. Whatever happens, we'll be ready, Commander. I guess we will be. Sort of. And yeah, I don't really plan on romancing Caden. Sorry, it's just kind of boring. I might uh, romance... Uh, Liara again. In fact, I probably will. And then I'll probably stick with her through the three games, but like I said, I'm definitely not going to record that far. Yes, Commander? Is there something you need? How did you end up serving on an Alliance ship? I enlisted right out of med school. Earth always seemed boring to me. Too safe. Too secure. I figured the colonies were teeming with exotic adventure. I wanted to travel the stars, tending the wounds of tough soldiers with piercing eyes and sensitive souls. <laughs> Turns out military life isn't quite as romantic as I'd imagined. But humanity needs the Alliance if we want to keep expanding through the Traverse, and the Alliance always needs good doctors. So I stayed on to do my part. Ever think you made the wrong choice? Sometimes I think about opening a private practice back on Earth. Or maybe taking a position at one of the new med centers out in the colonies. But there's something special about working on soldiers. If I left the Alliance now, I'd feel like I was abandoning them. What do you know about Captain Anderson? I've served with him for a few tours now. He knows when to let things slide and when to crack the whip. The crew knows he's seen pretty much anything they'll ever run into. And he cares about the people under his command. How well do you know the Lieutenant? I'd never worked with him before this mission. But he has an impressive service record, over a dozen special commendations. Tends to keep to himself, though. Maybe because of the headaches. 
It's not easy being an L2. With Shepard being a biotic herself, it makes even less sense that she would need to ask about this. What does that have to do with it? Well, most biotics now use the L3 implants. Lieutenant Alenko was wired with the old L2 configuration. Sometimes there are complications. What kind of complications? Severe mental disabilities, insanity, crippling physical pain. There's a long list of horrific side effects. Caden's lucky. He just gets migraines. Um, yeah, that doesn't really seem worth it, does it? I should go. Goodbye, Commander. Shotgun and a sniper rifle. All right. I'm glad you're okay, Commander. The crew could use some good news after what happened to Jenkins. Jenkins was a valuable part of this crew. Part of me feels guilty over what happened. If Jenkins was still alive, I might not be here. Well, like, her face looks kind of weird, honestly, compared to the original. Maybe because they took the later game character models into the earlier games. You're a good soldier, Williams. You belong on the Normandy. Thanks, Commander. I appreciate that. Things were pretty rough down there. Are you okay? I've seen friends die before. It comes with being a Marine. But to see my whole unit wiped out, and you never get used to seeing dead civilians. But things would have been a lot worse if you hadn't shown up. We couldn't have done it without you, Williams. Thanks, Commander. I have to admit, I was a little worried about being assigned to the Normandy. It's nice when someone makes you feel welcome. I think you're gonna fit in here just fine, Williams. Thanks, Commander. Alright. They really did a good job with the textures on the Normandy. I guess they played those a lot of attention, considering you see them a lot. These weird sleeping pods. I don't know if there's enough for the entire crew. Then again, you'd expect there to be rotations. I don't think we can look at anything yet for experience. Wait, you've always been able to talk to Captain Anderson in here? I don't remember that. Go speak to Joker when you're ready. Tell him to bring the Normandy into dock. And that might be why, because there's, he has nothing interesting to say. He does have his own bed. At least the captain gets his own bed. Yeah, they probably work in shifts, so they don't need to use that. All the. I'm kind of curious to see how fast the elevator is, but. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna leave that until we actually need it. Nice effect on the door. Oh no, I can investigate some stuff. Maybe? Where is it? Oh, there it is. From that angle, it looked like it was over here. Galaxy Maps loop looks uh, good. Actually, I can read some of the stuff that's on there. Not like it's showing anything important. I don't think it's uh, like any planets that we know about showing up. Just a bunch of random numbers. Only the commanding officer may specify a destination for Normandy. If only that were us. I'm glad you're okay, Commander. Losing Jenkins was hard enough on the crew. What do you guys do exactly? Like, what? what's your job? These are all N3. Is that related to N7? Probably not, because it's just on the chairs. Um, nothing to look at here. Let's go to the Citadel. I like how the view outside is something that's kind of useless to Joker, but I guess he doesn't fly by visual. Wouldn't really make sense in a spaceship. Good timing, Commander. I was just about to bring us into the Citadel. See that taxpayer money at work. Our taxpayers didn't pay for the Citadel.
my favorite scene in the game. Look at the size of that ship. The Ascension, flagship of the Citadel fleet. Well, size isn't everything. Why so touchy, Joker? I'm just saying you need firepower, too. Look at that monster. Its main gun could rip through the barriers in any ship in the Alliance fleet. Good thing it's on our side, then. Citadel Control, this is SSV Normandy, requesting permission to land. Stand by for clearance, Normandy. Clearance granted. You may begin your approach. Transferring you to an Alliance operator. Roger, Alliance Tower. Normandy out. This is an outrage! The Council would step in if the Geth attacked a Turian colony? The Turians don't found colonies on the borders of the Terminus systems, Ambassador. Humanity was well aware of the risks when you went into the Traverse. What about Seren? You can't just ignore a rogue specter. I demand action! You don't get to make demands of the Council, Ambassador. Citadel Security is investigating your charges against Seren. We will discuss the CSEC findings at the hearing, not before. Captain Anderson, I see you brought half your crew with you. Just the ground team from Eden Prime, in case you had any questions. I have the mission reports. I assume they're accurate? They are. Sounds like you convinced the Council to give us an audience. They were not happy about it. Seren's their top agent. They don't like him being accused of treason. Everybody's least favorite character. Ambassador Udina. Um, he looks very different. Saren's a threat to every human colony out there. He needs to be stopped. The Council has to listen to us. Settle down, Commander. You've already done more than enough to jeopardize your candidacy for the Spectres. The mission on Eden Prime was a chance to prove you could get the job done. Instead, Nihilus ended up dead and the beacon was destroyed. That's Saren's fault, not hers. Then we better hope the CSEC investigation turns up evidence to support our accusations. Otherwise, the Council might use this as an excuse to keep you out of the Spectres. Come with me, Captain. I want to go over a few things before the hearing. Shepard, you and the others can meet us at the Citadel Tower, top level. I'll make sure you have clearance to get in. And that's why I hate politicians. Yeah, some of them are almost okay. Not this guy, though. Alright, this is the moment we've all been waiting for. Remastered Citadel. It's the moment I've been waiting for, anyway. It looks pretty good. I do think the lighting here is kind of flat. Compared to the original. Definitely looks nice and sharp, though. We have any more levels, do we? No. We're almost at the level two, though. I love the Citadel. This is this is still my favorite version of the Citadel of, of all three games. It uh, is just nice and open. And yeah, it doesn't mean there's not as much to do when you walk around a lot, but I, I just love it. I can't help it. I can't tell the aliens from the animals. Couldn't give up the opportunity to let Ashley be racing here. All right. What are we doing? We are going to tower. Definitely don't remember all the side quests and stuff here. We'll do it as we go along, I guess. 
<laughs> Let's just uh, break into Dina's computer. Well, he is an asshole, so I don't really care. Lions Patrol report. Captain Hendrickson reported some unusual energy readings during a patrol of the Argus Row cluster. She had particular concerns about the Hydra system, but was recalled before her team could investigate further. No patrols are scheduled for that sector. Do we want to send in a recon team? Um, I don't know if they do, but we'll go anyway. Um, Volus and Elcor Ambassador up there, I think. We'll talk to them later. Can't go here. I would love to see the Citadel in a real open world engine. Mass Effect Andromeda definitely didn't really deliver on that. Whatever, I forget what their hub world was, was called, but it was not not as cool as the Citadel. The Citadel it was too much of a want, wannabe Citadel. Good day, Commander. The human ambassadors up the stairs, first room on the right. Um, that is where we just came from, so thanks. You know who I am? Yes, I receive reports on all newly arrived dignitaries and notable people. What is this place? This is the Presidium. More specifically, you are at the Citadel Embassies. If you have more questions, please access Savina. Way more detail on the Asari skin. What's that? Oh, Avina is the virtual guide for the Citadel. Feel free to access the terminal yourself. What's your name? What do you do here? My name is Sephiria. I'm the administrative assistant for the embassies. You seem to be distracted. The embassies are the hub of all Citadel politics. <laughs> when you represent trillions of citizens, it tends to get a little busy. I should be going now. Have a pleasant day. Uh, you'd expect there to be a lot of VI assistants talking, like dealing with all this kind of stuff. Discount Cortana over here. Greetings, and welcome to the Presidium. My name is Avina, and I am pleased to be your virtual guide throughout this level of the Citadel Space Station. It's just... The questions that Shepard can ask of um, Avina, I seriously had to think not to say Cortana, um, are just stupid. What does that mean? I am a fully interactive virtual intelligence. Programmed to provide spontaneous guidance at predetermined locations of interest throughout this level of the Citadel. I may also be contacted through any of the Presidium VI terminals, should you require assistance. Give me the tour. You are standing at Presidium Tourism Terminal 1. On either side of this lobby are the embassies of the various Citadel races, along with CSEC headquarters. On the far end of this level, you can see the Citadel Tower, where the Council meets regularly to discuss matters of interstellar importance. I want to know more about Citadel security. Citadel security serves as law enforcement for all regions of the Citadel, though the majority of officers serve in the wards. Executor Palin, a Turian, is the current head of CSEC, but individuals from virtually every species across Citadel space serve as officers beneath him. If you wish to learn more, Executor Palin's office is located in the CSEC headquarters just across the lobby. I forget if you can go talk to him before the council meeting. Let's see after we're done here. Tell me about the embassies. Each species in Citadel space important enough to be consulted on matters of galactic politics maintains an embassy on the Presidium. The Volus were the first non-council species to be granted an embassy roughly 2,384 galactic standard years ago. As Citadel space has expanded, more embassies have been added. The most recently added embassy belongs to your own species, humanity. It was added 19 galactic standard years ago, despite some rather vocal opposition. Why were people trying to keep my species out? Some species felt humanity was given preferential treatment it often takes a century or more before a new species is granted an embassy. The Council gave a great deal of thought to this matter. In the end, they decided humanity's impact on Citadel space was significant enough to warrant an embassy. And by impact on Citadel space, I think they mean the size of our, 
our fleet. How come the Volus were the first species given an embassy? In the early years following the formation of the Council, the Volus were, apart from the Usari and Salarians, the most populous and widespread species in Citadel space. They established many new colonies and trading outposts, and they petitioned the Council for a greater role in determining interstellar policy. In recognition of their work to expand interstellar trade and establish a standardized galactic economy, the Volus were granted an embassy here on the Citadel. Why weren't they made a council race? The council races have extensive responsibilities. They must provide personnel and ships for the Citadel fleets. They often provide economic aid in times of disaster. It would be unfair to demand such an enormous burden of a species unable to meet these obligations. The embassies allow lesser species to have a voice on the Citadel. <laughs> it does sound... Uh Racist, doesn't it? To voice it like lesser species, or I guess speciest. That's pretty damn arrogant. I apologize if my personality has offended you. Please submit all formal complaints in writing to the Citadel Tourist and Visitor Board. Yeah, I'll get right on that. Do you know anything about specters? The term specter is derived from the branch of special tactics and reconnaissance. Each specter agent is handpicked by the council. Their primary role is preserving galactic stability and resolving volatile situations that cannot be handled through normal political channels. In this role, they are granted extraterritorial rights and jurisdictions. Spectres answer to no law or authority except the Council itself. Seems a uh, weird way of doing things. What can you tell me about the Citadel Council? Originally, the Council consisted of representatives from the Asari and Salarians the two dominant species in Citadel space. Roughly 1,304 galactic standard years ago, Turians were invited to join the Council in recognition of the role they played during the Krogan Rebellion. Since then, the three Council races have worked together to ensure the peaceful coexistence of the galactic community, while preserving individual autonomy for each species. It can't be as simple as that. There must be problems somewhere in the system. I am not programmed to make that kind of qualified judgment. My code is limited to information and simple interaction simulations. It would be interesting to learn more about how the system actually works. It's kind of weird, you know, there's just three people in charge of everything, which is probably not how it actually works. They probably delegate a lot. Goodbye. Goodbye, and thank you for using Avena. Please enjoy your visit to the Citadel. But, you know... Uh, this game already does a very impressive amount of world building, so... Hi there, where are you going? Just bump into me, why not? Like, this game does world building on the level of, you know... Sci-fi novels. Even beyond some of those. Wait, isn't the Elcor guy here? I love talking to him. Yes. Human, delighted, welcome. It is good to meet you. Ah, you humans are a wonderful sight here on the Citadel. It is good to see you, human. I sincerely hope you enjoy your time here. The Elcor are, like, one of my favorite species. I wish they would have done more with them. I guess it's hard because they can't really be animated. Oh yeah, we're gonna have to scan these. I wonder if I can remember where they are. I can't believe I landed a job here. This place is fantastic. I mean, as far as offices, it's kind of sparse. Don't you just love it here? There's so much to see and do. I guess that's true. I'm not really going to go through all of these minor, like, not really interactive conversations in too much detail. I'll talk to people when I feel like it. Commander Shepard, I didn't expect to see you here. Did Ambassador Udina send you? Have we met before? No, but I know you well enough. 
I'm Executor Palum, head of CSEC. It's my job to know when someone like you arrives on the Citadel. Was there something you needed, Commander? I get the feeling you're not too fond of humans. No, I just don't trust your kind. Not yet. You humans are eager to take all the power you can get, and you're being given a lot. If the Council wants to make humanity their new favorite pet, that's their business. But I don't have to like it. <laughs> I like how she made the, the observation that um, he didn't like humans based on, like, two lines of dialogue. The Council treats us like second-class citizens. We have to fight for everything we get. Good. Then fight for it. But don't expect the rest of us to just sit back and let you take it. I'm a busy man, Commander. Are we done here? What do you know about the Spectres? They're the right hand of the Council, or so they like to be called. More like the underhanded side of the Council. What do you have against the Spectres? I can't abide any organization that considers itself above the law. Especially when it's left up to each individual Spectre to decide when and how to bend the rules. I kind of agree with him, honestly. <laughs> Sometimes you have to bend the law to keep people safe. I've been with CSEC for 30 years. I've never had to break the law to do my job, not once. Yeah, right. You expect us to believe none of your officers are corrupt? There are over 200,000 CSEC agents. Some of them are going to be bad. But we don't turn a blind eye to corruption like the Spectres do. We do our best to find and punish any officer who breaks the law. Spectres. <laughs> They'll never come under that kind of scrutiny. The galaxy needs people like that. People who do the dirty jobs. I agree. But they need to be held to a higher standard. They need to be accountable. Saren's out of control. We both know that. But because he's a Spectre, the Council doesn't want to do anything about it. Is that the kind of person this galaxy needs? But not all Spectres are like Saren. True. But the potential is always there. Yeah, they do seem to have way too much power for any individual. Tell me about CSEC. CSEC provides necessary police and security services throughout the Citadel. We're a civilian government agency, though many of our members have had military training. Of course, as the CSEC representative to the Council, I spend most of my time liaising between the two. Tell me about your investigation into Saren. Sorry, Commander. I don't make a habit of giving out details about ongoing investigations. Fair enough. I'll be going now. Goodbye, Commander. And if you don't mind, we're going to break into your computer as well. Diplomatic advisory warning. The following message was transmitted from an untraceable account to multiple recipients across the extranet. Further monitoring of the situation is warranted. My fellow Biotic, you have been selected to receive this transmission because of our shared plight. Few understand us. Fewer tolerate us. We must stand together. We must build our own new world. Come, join us in the Hawking Eda Cluster. Only as one body can we right the wrongs done to our kind. Oh yeah, that's the biotic cult mission. I think that's the first one I did. One thing I'm really curious about is whether or not the galaxy map has percentages now in this game, which it did not in the original, which made it really easy to miss side quests. I just love looking at the Citadel. Krogan statue over there. Oh, Nasana. I remember you. Or these are guys talking about the consort, right? I don't believe the rumors. The consort would never reveal her secrets. What do you want? Oh, Commander. Is there something I can do for you? Relax, Private. This isn't an inspection. Right, sorry. What can I do for you, Commander? What can you tell me about the Asari consort? I, uh... Well, she's an Asari who works here as... That is, she helps people with... things. You never went to see her, did you, Fredericks? I, uh... No, I never did. Uh, 
I couldn't afford it. It costs half a year's credits just to go in and talk to her. Can you at least tell me where I can find her? Sure. She's across the bridge from the embassies. Thanks, kid. Have fun. Try not to get into too much trouble. I will. Have fun, that is. I'm sure you will. Can we talk to Nasana yet? I don't have time to talk now. I'm very busy. No, I didn't think so. Like, she doesn't she like send you a message when she actually needs your help? Hello, Commander. Can I get you something? What have you got? Information, mostly. Would you like to know about some points of interest nearby? How about a drink? Isn't this a bar? What's going on around here? Well, you found the embassies. Not much going on here. Across the bridge, you'll find the bank, the Emporium, and Shaira's. If you haven't heard of her, you soon will. If you need supplies, you can try the markets one level below. For entertainment, I'd try Flux or Cora's Den. You've conveniently mentioned every single place we can visit in the in this game. What is Shaira's? The consort? Uh, she entertains clients who can afford her services. Most of the diplomats and ambassadors have visited her at one time or another. She's a very powerful woman, but also very respected. Tell me about Flux in Cora's den. Well, Flux has gambling and dancing, certainly more lively than this place. Cora's den, on the other hand, well, let's just say it's livelier and deadlier all at the same time. Goodbye. So long, Commander. Have a pleasant day. Um, there's just a keeper out here, right? Yeah. I have to come back. Wait, who are you? This place seems strange. I wish there were more humans around. I think there's actually quite a few humans, considering how new we are here. You must be very annoyed every time somebody walks by here, his door opens. Annoy the hell out of me. Where's this door you have to push the button? That makes no sense. I guess uh, Palin does not value his privacy. Let's head towards the tower. I guess I can run, which will make this a bit faster. Um, was that supposed to be in a tutorial thing? Because it's not. The game has a few glitches. I know, I'm not going to use rapid transit just yet, especially because, you know, oh, you do still get fatigued running, though. You used to be able to kind of run indefinitely. I don't know if the base speed has uh, increased at all. There's no fatigue meter, which makes it kind of annoying. The jellyfish isn't here yet. I forget when he shows up. Is that after you become a specter? That heads down to the wards. Yeah. I remember the layout fairly well. Uh, there's the Maz Relay statue. We know what that is, of course. What's it doing? Please do not disturb the keepers. I will disturb the keepers if I want. Especially considering I know what they are. Welcome to Presidium Tourism Terminal 2. You are standing near the base of the Citadel Tower, one of the Presidium's most recognizable and important structures. Behind me is the Spectacular Relay Monument, a scale model representation of a Prothean mass relay. To your left is one of the Keepers, the enigmatic caretakers of the Citadel, working on a control panel. You may see keepers involved in various tasks throughout all levels of the Citadel. We ask that you do not interfere with them in any way. The keepers are essential to the smooth operation of the Citadel. Obstructing their daily work will result in harsh penalties, including incarceration and rehabilitation. Is it me or is Avina more transparent than she was in the original game? Or does the new lighting just make it look like it? Tell me more about the Relay Monument. Discovered by the Asari who first arrived at the Citadel, the Relay Monument is one of the station's most interesting and controversial features. What is the meaning behind this striking piece of art? Is it a tribute to Prothean vanity? A reminder of their conquest of the galaxy through mass relay technology? 
Or perhaps it is a symbol of unity. A Prothean acknowledgement that the relays would eventually lead other species here to the Citadel. No one can say for sure, making the Relay Monument a favorite topic of discussion among academics and scholars. Perhaps it's a backdoor into the Citadel left behind by... The Reapers? Did the Reapers build the conduit? Or are they just using it? I forget. Tell me about the Citadel Tower. Housing both the Council Chambers and Citadel Control, the tower is one of the most important buildings on the station. Access to these areas is restricted to those with the appropriate clearance. What happens in Citadel Control? Citadel Control handles all incoming and outbound transit. Every ship within 2,000 kilometers of the Citadel is under the jurisdiction of Citadel Control. At peak capacity, they are responsible for monitoring upwards of a thousand vessels. So basically air traffic control? I'd like to hear more about the council chambers. The business of the council, which often has far-reaching effects on the galactic community, is conducted in a room at the apex of the Citadel Tower. The council chambers themselves are truly a magnificent sight to behold, though few get to experience the view in person. Typically, only the counselors, ambassadors, and high-ranking officials, along with various support staff, are allowed access. What if someone has business with the council? The average citizen must go through the proper channels if they wish an audience with the council. This is usually arranged through their respective ambassadors. Even then, few are given access to the actual council chambers. In most cases, the ambassador acts on behalf of the citizen. I'm scheduled to have an audience with the Council. Only a handful of visitors to the Citadel are ever granted that privilege. I would be jealous, but that is outside the scope of my programming. Sir, sure seems like you are jealous. I'd like to know more about the Keepers. Little is known about these peaceful servants of the Citadel, though they are essential to the operation and maintenance of the entire station. Citadel regulations protect the Keepers against interference during the performance of their tasks. Failure to comply will result in harsh penalties. Keepers can be seen in all sections of the Citadel, but are typically found in and around the Tower. Any particular reason there are so many Keepers in this area? The Keepers do not communicate with other species. It is assumed, however, that the Tower houses the Citadel's primary control systems. Many of the station systems, such as navigation and life support, function automatically. It is believed the Keepers operate those systems from inside the tower's inaccessible core. The Keepers also make frequent appearances in the Council Chamber itself, though they appear to be just passing through on their way to some other destination. That's all for now. Thank you for using Alina. Have a pleasant day. Um, yeah, let's just make the, this weird alien space station that we don't understand how it works at all, the heart of our civilization. There's no way that could have any negative consequences. I think the Citadel actually uses spin gravity, not uh, artificial gravity, which I think the Normandy has. I think there's a sign in like Mass Effect 2 saying to beware of Coriolis effect when you drop things. Let's try an elevator. The council isn't going to ask me any questions, are they? I doubt it. We've made our reports. Now we just have to trust Ambassador Udina. No, we don't, sir. I agree with her. This is going so much faster. The movement speed is ridiculous. That's way better, and I think you can skip it as well. Oh wow, this, this looks nice. I like what they did with the lighting here. Cherry blossoms, I think, for some reason. Why are there earth trees here? It's kind of... still kind of weird to me, but... I think that is what they are. Garrus! Saren's hiding something. Give me more time. Stall them. 
Stall the council. Don't be ridiculous. Your investigation is over, Garrus. Commander Shepard, Garrus Vicarian. I was the officer in charge of the CSEC investigation into Saren. How did Executive Prowlin get to here before us? Maybe he used rapid travel. Sounds like you really want to bring him down. I don't trust him. Something about him rubs me the wrong way. But he's a specter. Everything he touches is classified. I can't find any hard evidence. I think the Council's ready for us, Commander. Good luck, Shepard. Maybe they'll listen to you. Yeah, don't hold your breath. It's almost weird to see Garrus without the blurry face. Did I, like... I think I applied, like, a user fix that at least fixed the level of detail issue? When I uh, did the Let's Play? I don't actually remember. I wonder if they changed the particle effects. Are these even particle effects? They might just be billboard textures. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, he looks terrible in, in the first game. A lot better now. And of course, I think everybody knows that uh, the council chamber looks suspiciously like a reaper. In some uh, epic foreshadowing. Like, I want to talk more about my thoughts about Mass Effect 2 and 3, but there's too much happening. I don't have enough dead space. <laughs> to talk about anything at length. The hearing's already started. Come on. The Geth attack is a matter of some concern, but there is nothing to indicate Saren was involved in any way. The investigation by Citadel Security turned up no evidence to support your charge of treason. An eyewitness saw him kill Nihilus in cold blood. We've read the Eden Prime reports, Ambassador. The testimony of one traumatized dock worker is hardly compelling proof. I resent these accusations. Nihilus was a fellow Spectre and a friend. That just let you catch him off guard. Captain Anderson, you always seem to be involved when humanity makes false charges against me. And this must be your protege, Commander Shepard. The one who let the beacon get destroyed. I don't get these weird, blurry... Monochrome holographic communicators. Honestly, it's worse than just a screen. <laughs> the mission to Eden Prime was top secret. The only way you could know about the beacon was if you were there. With Nihilus gone, his files passed on to me. I read the Eden Prime report. I was unimpressed. But what can you expect from a human? Saren despises humanity. That's why he attacked Eden Prime. Your species needs to learn its place, Shepard. You're not ready to join the Council. You're not even ready to join the Spectres. He has no right to say that. That's not his decision. Shepard's admission into the Spectres is not the purpose of this meeting. This meeting has no purpose. The humans are wasting your time, Counselor, and mine. Saren's hiding behind his position as a Spectre. You need to open your eyes. What we need is evidence. So far, we've seen nothing. There is still one outstanding issue. Commander Shepard's vision. It may have been triggered by the Beacon. Are we allowing dreams into evidence now? How can I defend my innocence against this kind of testimony? I agree. Our judgment must be based on facts and evidence, not wild imaginings and reckless speculation. Do you have anything else to add, Commander Shepard? Gee, it's almost as if Executor Palin was right about the Spectres. They're just being protected by the Council. You've made your decision. I won't waste my breath. Shake the Council your head at me. has found no evidence of any connection between Saren and the Geth. Ambassador, your petition to have him disbarred from the Spectres is denied. I'm glad to see justice was served. This meeting is adjourned.
It was a mistake bringing you into that hearing, Captain. You and Saren have too much history. It made the Council question our motives. I know Saren. He's working with the Geth for one reason. To exterminate the entire human race. Every colony we have is at risk. Every world we control is in danger. Even Earth isn't safe. It's actually worse than that. Tell me about this history between you and Saren. I worked with him on a mission a long time ago. Things went bad. Real bad. We shouldn't talk about this here. But I know what he's like. And he has to be stopped. What's our next step? As a Spectre, he's virtually untouchable. We need to find some way to expose him. What about Garrus, that CSEC investigator? We saw him arguing with the Executor. That's right. He was asking for more time to finish his report. Seems like he was close to finding something on Saren. Any idea where we could find him? I have a contact in CSEC who can help us track Garrus down. His name is Harkin. Forget it. They suspended Harkin last month, drinking on the job. I won't waste my time with that loser. You won't have to. I don't want the Council using your past history with Saren as an excuse to ignore anything we turn up. Shepard will handle this. You can't just cut Captain Anderson out of this investigation. The Ambassador's right. I need to step aside. I need to take care of some business. Captain, meet me in my office later. Harkin's probably getting drunk at Cora's Den. It's a dingy little club in the lower section of the wards. Maybe there's another way to find evidence against Saren. You should talk to Barla Vaughn over in the Financial District. Rumor has it he's an agent for the Shadow Broker. The Shadow Broker? An information dealer. Buys and sells secrets to the highest bidder. I've heard Barla Vaughn's one of the top representatives. He might know something about Saren, but his information won't come cheap. You and Saren have a history. What happened? About 20 years ago, I was part of a mission in the Skillian Verge. I was working with Saren to find and remove a known terrorist threat. Saren eliminated his target, but a lot of people died along the way, innocent people. And the official records just covered it all up. But I saw how he operates. No conscience, no hesitation. He'd kill a thousand innocent civilians to end a war without a second thought. Killing innocents doesn't end wars, it causes them. I know how the world works, Commander. Sometimes you're forced to make unpleasant decisions. But only if there's no other way. Saren doesn't even look for another option. He's twisted, broken. He likes the violence, the killing. And he knows how to cover his tracks. Tell me more about the Shadow Broker. He's a necessary evil of galactic politics. Buying and selling information is a part of the game. And the Shadow Broker just happens to be the best player on the field. Always sells to the highest bidder. Doesn't get involved in politics, doesn't pick sides. A simple system, but it works. He's not a threat to anyone, not directly. He's just a resource we can use, or she is. Or maybe they are. Nobody really knows. Shadow Broker worked better when they were still mysterious, I think. Our ambassador doesn't seem to get along with the Council. He's just frustrated. The Council's always preaching that we need to be part of the galactic community. But for them, it's a one-way street. They want us to expand and settle unstable regions like the Skillian Verge and the Attican Traverse. But when we run into trouble, they don't want to help us out. Everyone knows it's only a matter of time until we get a seat on the Council. The Ambassador just thinks it should happen sooner rather than later. And I agree. Maybe they'd let us join the Council if we were more willing to cooperate with the other species. Of course they would. If we did everything they told us to, they'd love to have us on the Council but it wouldn't be much of a deal for us. I understand their side. They don't want us dominating the Council. It's founded on cooperation and alliances. But we have to look out for our own interests, too. You don't think much of Harkin. The guy joined CSEC about 20 years ago. He's been an embarrassment to our species ever since. Roughing up suspects in custody, bribery accusations, alcohol and drug use. The Embassy used to step in when he got in trouble. But I guess enough was enough. Guy's a scumbag. He should have been cut loose a long time ago. He was one of the first human CSEC officers. Guess it would have looked bad if he got fired. A lot of backroom deals were worked out over the years to keep him on the force. Politics is a dirty business sometimes, but it looks like his time's run out. We've got enough humans in CSEC now to stop protecting him. 
I want to know more about the Spectres. They're not your typical government agency. They tend to work alone, behind the scenes. They take care of problems the Council can't. It's not easy preserving peace across an entire galaxy. The Council prefers to use diplomacy and negotiation. But sometimes more extreme measures are needed. They sound like shadow operatives. Everything about them is classified. We don't even know how many there are. The latest Alliance estimate puts their numbers under a hundred. But the Council couldn't do its job without them. They're the Citadel's top agents. The last line of defense. The final option before open war. The entire galaxy respects and fears them. If a Spectre shows up, you know something big is about to happen. How do they decide who becomes a Spectre? You can't just apply to join. There's no training program. Spectres aren't made. They're born. The Council's always looking for exceptional individuals. People who can get the job done. Like you. They've been watching you for years. They see something in you. They want you on their side. Nihilus was supposed to give them a final recommendation. But with him gone, things are still up in the air. Hmm. Uh... Did Garrus in the second game at some point say that he applied for Spectre training? So, I guess there is a Spectre training program? What's their command structure like? There is no command structure. Each Spectre answers directly to the Council. Sometimes they're sent on specific missions. Other times, they act on their own. They tend to operate outside the law, do whatever it takes to accomplish their goals. The Council just turns a blind eye. Spectres have a lot of power, shall we? What happens when a Spectre goes rogue, like Saren? It doesn't happen often. The Council is careful when they select their candidates. But when something does go wrong, there's usually only one solution. Send another Spectre to bring the rogue agent down. Gee, that's exactly what Jenkins said. Tell me about Bar Levan. He specializes in moving large sums of money without leaving a paper trail. A financial genius doesn't do anything illegal. But he knows all the loopholes. He's got an impressive client list. Ambassadors, diplomats, specters. That's probably why the Shadow Broker uses him. I should go. Good luck, Shepard. I'll be over in the Ambassador's office if you need anything else. Didn't I level up yet? Oh, I did. Um, let's see. I got six points. Um... Always want to max out charm. Should probably put some points in adept. Um, let's do armor, throw, and warp. Can matter too much. Right now, yeah, to, encryption is important. Be good to have the that up a little bit, especially right now. What do I want? Advanced sabotage or overload? Let's do overload. And you don't really matter. Uh, I wish that would apply for the whole squad. That would be cool. Alright, well, the council was no help, as usual. So, off we go. Huh. I bet all these staircases aren't just for show. They make for good defensive positions if this place is ever attacked. Gee, I wonder if that'll ever happen. There's Keeper, guy. That guy's up to something. What? Oh, no, I wasn't. Never mind. Um, yes, is there something you want? Why are you so interested in the Keepers? Keepers? I've got no interest in the Keepers. Don't get coy. I know what I saw. I, uh... I'm not so sure I should be talking to you about this. 
We're just talking. Is there something wrong with that? No. I guess it wouldn't hurt to tell you. I'm using a small scanner to gather readings on the Keepers. So far I've had mixed results. I find it difficult to get near the creatures. Why were you being so secretive about it, though? Well, technically we're not supposed to disturb the Keepers. I don't really think my scanning disturbs them, but the authorities might disagree. I'd like to do it more openly, but it's not really worth getting arrested over. I can help you out. I'm not worried about the authorities. I don't even know who you are. I'm Commander Shepard with the Alliance Military. Hmm. Well, I, I suppose I could use the help. You'll need this. It's the scanning device I developed. Activated each time you see a Keeper. All collected data will automatically upload to my database. I'll even send a few credits your way for each unique scan. <laughs> or if you're high level, you'll get a lot of credits. What are you doing with the data once you've scanned it? Trying to learn whatever I can about the Keepers. We see them working everywhere, yet we know so little about them. I'm a scientist. I want to know what makes them tick. I can understand that. I should get going then. Yes, I have much work myself. So long, and good luck with the scanning. We can scan that one, even though it's uh, really weird considering he was right next to it, so he probably already scanned it. But, you know, he still paid us for it, so who cares? No, I'm waiting to speak with one of the Council's assistants. Ambassador of Admiral, uh, Admiral Kohoku over here. Commander. Who we can't talk to yet. There's a few keepers here. I like the council chambers. Um, forget where all the keepers are, though. There's one on the other side. No, I just want to ask a couple of questions. I was talking earlier about how like my opinions have changed a little bit. I scanned that one. Um, uh, regarding Mass Effect Two and Three, I really think like Mass Effect One is my favorite game in the series and. It definitely does the best job with the main plot, like it sets up a great mystery right from the start and really makes it feel like you're unraveling it as you're playing. And then it kind of ends with like this this hook for like, okay, we know the Reapers exist, we've proven they exist, and now we need to go uh, figure out what to do uh, about them and how we can defeat them. And then the second game kind of just throws that away. Second game is just like, okay, we've, uh, there's no more here. No, don't think so. Um, the second game is just like, okay, we're going to replace that with this plot about Cerberus and the, and the collectors. And I, I guess it kind of could have worked, at least the collector part. Um, but there's no real good reason why Shepard is doing this other than like, oh, Cerberus wants him to protect humanity and you know Sh Shepard just kind of treated as this this icon as Miranda calls him whereas you know in this game you're you're a good soldier but you're not treated as anything really special I can't believe the council ignored all the evidence against Saren Saren's one of their best operators it's only natural they take his word over ours oh so now we just chase leads while this smug Turian runs around with And you could skip it, that's nice. Um, oh, okay, I guess the game does still have some texture popping. That leave disappeared when it fell. If you want more money, then it's much better to wait until you're a higher level to do that, but... Doesn't really matter if you do all the side quests because you end up selling so much stuff that you get so much money anyway. And I always intend to do all the side quests, that's just how I roll. Yeah, but yeah, Mass Effect 2, like, like in the first game, you're just this 
you're a good soldier, you become the Spectre, but you're not like the Chosen One type thing. You be kind of become the Chosen One because you saw the Beacon Vision and then you get the Cypher. And I think that's like more what we should have done in the second one. Like, okay, Shepard has the Cypher, he understands this Prophean stuff better than anyone. That's why he should be, or she in this case, would be the one to investigate. And that's not really the way they go with it. And a lot of Shepard's agency is gone too by just doing what the... Uh, what the elusive man wants. Like here, the game is very carefully crafted to give you the illusion that you have freedom of choice, even though you actually don't. The second uh, game is much more like you're just doing what the elusive man says. And Cerberus itself just makes no sense in the constant context of the world. Like a, a clandestine human organization that somehow has more power than most major species. Just that doesn't really make any sense. What's this? One of the Earth Clan. Ah, a very famous one, yes? You are the one called Shepard. The tale of how you survived the great tragedy on Akuz is truly remarkable. I am amazed each time I hear it. Everybody seems to know who we are. Volus definitely looked better. I remember their little talking blight being very low detail. You've got me at a disadvantage here. Forgive me, Earth Clan. My name is Barla Vaughn. My job makes it necessary for me to keep informed. I am a financial advisor to many important clients here on the Citadel. When someone as important as yourself arrives on the station, I take notice. I heard you work for the Shadow Broker. Do you have any information about Saren? You're very blunt, Shepard. But you're right. I am an agent for the Shadow Broker, and I do know something about Saren. I hear your information can be expensive. Normally, this information would cost a small fortune, but these are exceptional circumstances, so I am going to give it to you for free. What's the catch? There is no catch. The Shadow Broker is quite upset with Saren right now. They used to do a lot of business, until Saren turned on him. That's not a smart thing to do, as we've learned. That's what happens when you deal with a traitor like Saren. No matter what you think of Saren, he's not stupid. He knows the Shadow Broker is a valuable ally. Turning on him doesn't make sense. Not unless something huge was at stake. I don't know the details, but the Shadow Broker hired a freelancer to deal with it. A Krogan mercenary. That's not much to go on. I just told you that the most famous specter in the galaxy betrayed the Shadow Broker. Quite a bargain, considering the price. Speak with the Krogan if you want to learn more. I heard he was paying a visit to Citadel Security. If you hurry, you might catch him before he leaves the Academy. Isn't it strange that a Krogan would want to speak with C-Sec? Very. However, I doubt the visit was entirely his choice. You'll need to speak with him if you want to know more. Tell me more about your job. Galactic finance is incredibly complex. A mix of laws and regulations from dozens of interstellar economies. I'm an expert in how all these economies interact. For a fee, I share my expertise. I also offer premium services for those clients who need someone to conduct business without drawing unwanted attention. Discreet and efficient. That's my motto. Sounds pretty shady. Everything I do falls completely within the bounds of interstellar commerce law. Even so, many of my clients would prefer their transactions remain undisclosed. For example, suppose a Hanar ambassador was petitioning the council to reduce tariffs on Hanar goods. How would it look if he had money invested in a Hanar exporting company? Even if his true motives were to help his people, he would be accused of advancing the petition for his own personal gain. I can keep his personal finances private. Still sounds shady to me. Then we can only hope you will never be cursed with a large enough fortune to require my services. Well, you, we definitely will in this game. Tell me more about the Shadow Broker. Most people think I deal in finances. 
but my real currency is knowledge. I trade information, and it has made me very wealthy. But the Shadow Broker is the true master. Every day he buys and sells secrets that could topple governments, always giving them to the highest bidder. Yet somehow he never seems to upset the natural balance of power. All those secrets being passed around seem to even out. Nobody ends up with an advantage in the end. That seems like a pretty difficult game to play. Any guess what his identity might be? I don't know. Nobody does. The Shadow Broker could be any race, any gender. I have a theory that it's actually an entire group working under one identity. How else could they juggle so many contacts at the same time? How else could they keep all that information from getting crossed? But they've got the perfect setup. Every government is forced to play their game so they don't get behind. But no matter how long you play, no matter how many secrets you buy, you can never win. It would have made way more sense for the Shadow Broker to be a group of people, rather than this one Yogg. I thought you'd know more about the man you work for. From time to time I come across information I sell to the Shadow Broker. That's my only involvement. I like it that way. The more you know, the more dangerous the game becomes. I don't like danger, Commander. I'll leave that to you. What's it like living here on the Citadel? The station is, without a doubt, the greatest wonder in the galaxy. It is a technological marvel, but its true splendor goes much deeper than the hull and engines. From the Presidium to the wards, the entire station is a testament to the success of the Council. All the species of Citadel spaced together in a single strong community. What makes the Presidium so special? It is the political center of Citadel space. 80% of all intelligent species in the known galaxy acknowledge the Council's authority on interstellar matters. But only the most powerful and influential species have embassies here on the Presidium. This level of the station is reserved for the elite, Shepard. People like us. What are the wards like? The cultural heart of the galaxy. They pulse with the lifeblood of millions of citizens from dozens of different species. You never know what you'll find out in the wards, Commander. It's always full of surprises. Fortunately, most of them are pleasant. I should go. Goodbye, Commander. I miss Shepard saying I should go. Anyway, as I was saying, like, yeah, I think Mass Effect 2 really dropped the ball on the main plot. It did a lot of things really right, like it was really great with the characters and the side missions, especially the Quarian and Krogan stories got expanded on a lot, which was done really well. But the main story just kind of dropped the ball, and it put Mass Effect 3 in a bad position to recover from. And they still have to deal with Cerberus as well, which, like I said, just like, kind of breaks parts of the universe. And then, uh, yeah, when, once you got to the ending, that's basically where all of that, you know, loss of integrity in the story finally collapsed, and that's, I think, why people don't like the ending, more so than the ending itself really being the problem. It's more that it just couldn't have been satisfying, considering where the story went after the start of Mass Effect 2. Ah, human. This one is greatly pleased to see you here in my decadent emporium. These things are still weird. Who are you? This one's face name is Delaninder. Though many in this place simply refer to it as Delon. Please take time to examine the fine goods it has for purchase, all of great worth. What exactly do you sell? Only the finest and most luxurious items that credits can buy. This one is able to procure almost any item the human would desire, for a price, naturally. Why do you refer to yourself as this one and it? For the same reason that humans are so inquisitive. It is part of our culture. Specifically, Hanar only refer to themselves in the first person with family or intimates. 
and we rarely do so with other species. It is just our way. Who are you? This oh. Please take time to examine the fine goods it has for purchase. All Show me great. your items. Oh, this one is pleased to do so, human. You will not be disappointed. Oh, I wish they would have improved this. Um, you really should be able to switch here between the... Oh, they have some... Quarian and Krogan armor for sale. They have nothing to compare it to. So that's kind of pointless at this point. I think I can pretty much sell everything. Uh, I guess I can keep the heavy armor. Nah, nah, it's not going to be... By the time I actually can use it, if I even end up using it very much. Uh, shotguns and... I don't, didn't text a sniper rifle. I'll look at that. I'll keep the edge one as well, just in case. That was Caden's old. No, it's the one we didn't want to use, so yeah, I can get rid of that. I'll keep those. Um, where did everything else go? Okay. I guess that's a glitch. That's so annoying that now... Commander, it is you have to go through eyes. this again to view everything oh, else. Um... Armor upgrades. Nah, nothing. That's of too much interest. Commander, it is show me your items. Oh, wow, that's a high-level shotgun. Not that I can afford it. I want the license. Phoenix 4. That's kind of higher level. It's not very great, though. Scorpion is just too good. That's the real problem there. A lot of the stuff I was talking about, like, my opinion has kind of been informed by uh, something written by... I know there was a keeper here. Uh, by Seamus Young, who did a very long, like, novel-length retrospective. I think he actually is re releasing it as a PDF or an actual book for the remaster, but it's all available for free on, on his website. I'll put a link in the description. It's very interesting. I don't agree with everything he says, but uh, he does, like, kind of dissect the narrative and see, like, why some parts of it don't work. Which, to me, at least, was very interesting to read. And it did kind of, like, some things I might have already been thinking, but didn't put into words that well yet. Huh. Did a nice job on the statue. If you're gonna make a Krogan statue, you might as well make it big, right? Right. Welcome to Presidium Tourism Terminal 3. Here in the Financial District, a number of businesses offer various goods and services to their exclusive clientele. The statue you see before you was commissioned to honor the Krogan soldiers who gave their lives to protect Citadel space during the Rachni Wars. In the aftermath of the Krogan rebellions, several embassies petitioned to have the statue removed. However, this motion was eventually quashed by the Council. Tell me more about the Krogan rebellions. In recognition of their efforts during the Rachni Wars, the Krogan were granted several new colony worlds by the Council. 
Over the next 400 years, the Krogan species began to expand. Blessed with an extremely high birth rate, their numbers began to swell. Faced with a critical overpopulation crisis, the Krogan started a violent colonization of nearby worlds inhabited by other Council species. The Krogan rebellions had begun. For a full century, the Council and its member species fought to bring the Krogan under control. With the aid of the newly discovered Turian Empire, they were ultimately successful. You needed the Krogan to stop the Rachni. Then you needed the Turians to stop the Krogan. So who's going to stop the Turians? I am sorry, but that question is beyond my programming parameters. The Turians are members of the Citadel Council. They are not a threat to galactic peace. I love how everything is kind of set into motion here by the main plot, because we know, of course, that the Reapers, or Sovereign anyway, tried to use the Ragni, which caused that problem. And then, you know, they needed the Krogan, which caused the Rebellions, and then they needed the Turians, and it's, it's all just kind of, like, following on each other, which is a very cool way to do the history, I think. Why did the Council fight so hard to keep the statue? The Krogan were instrumental in saving the galaxy from the Rachni threat. The Council believed this historical fact should not be forgotten. The Council also hoped that preserving the memorial would improve diplomatic relations with the Krogan and bring about a peaceful resolution to the rebellions. Unfortunately, the Krogan refused to negotiate and only surrendered after their population and homeworlds had been ravaged by the Turians. And, you know, they've been basically sterilized. What were the Rachni Wars? Nearly 2,200 years ago, explorers seeking to expand Citadel space opened up mass relays leading to systems controlled by the Rachni. A highly intelligent and aggressive insect race, the Rachni unleashed a war of conquest against the rest of the galaxy that lasted for nearly three centuries. The emergence of the Krogan finally turned the tide in favor of the Citadel species. Krogan forces provided the numbers necessary to halt the Rachni advance and drive them back. The Krogan then pursued their retreating fleets. Able to survive the harsh environments of the Rachni homeworlds, the Krogan hunted their enemy to extinction. Was it really necessary to wipe them out? I am sorry, but a value judgment of that nature goes beyond my programming. That's all for now. Thank you for using Avena. Have a pleasant day. I like how this game gives you XP for stuff like that rather than just at the end of missions, what like Mass Effect uh, 2 and 3 do. It does mean that you end up having to deal with upgrading uh, at annoying times. Can you go to the consort yet? I don't know. Welcome. I am Nelina. I don't recognize you as one of our expected clients today. Would you like me to see when the consort will be able to meet with you? Can't I just go in? Mm, I'm afraid not. Yeah, you must understand there are many who seek the consort services. But if you wish to leave your name, she'll make every effort to meet with you. What do you do here, Nelina? I'm one of the consort's acolytes. Many of the people here today will not see the consort, but they expect to be attended to just the same. It's our job to ensure that they leave contented. What exactly do you attend to? Well, each acolyte has her unique abilities. Some soothe with song, others with conversation. As much as possible, we seek to match the needs of our clients to the skills of our acolytes. My specialty is touch. My fingertips can find every tension point in your body and relieve it. I'd like to try out your services. Excellent. I'll add you to our client list. We should be able to see you in mm, three or four months. Nobody's worth that much of a wait. <laughs> well, that's not for me to judge. I have your name and you'll be contacted. Is there anything else? 
That's quite the waiting list. What is the consort? What does she do? Mm, it's difficult to explain. She's many things to many people, and something different for each. Some seek her for advice, some for entertainment, others still for pleasure. Most of the time, our clients won't realize what they were seeking until after she has provided it for them. You make her sound like some kind of oracle. No, not in the usual sense. She's merely a woman. A woman with remarkable compassion and a generous spirit. I suggest you make an appointment and see for yourself. I think I'm done here. Oh, well, I hope you'll return again in the future. We always enjoy seeing new clients. Nalina. Yes, Shaira? Send the commander up to see me. I wish to speak with her. Yes, of course, mistress. Yeah, that hasn't gotten any less over the top. Huh. It appears the consort has taken notice of you. She'd like to meet with you now. Where do I go? Just head upstairs. She'll be waiting for you. You can see her now. All right. I see even the humans find the consort irresistible. Why, why are you surprised of that? And I guess based on that one conversation uh, in Mass Effect 2 where they're speculating like everybody sees the Asari to look similar to their own species. I wonder if that's actually true. It would be kind of weird. You're with the Alliance? My brother's a private back on Earth. Are these uniforms? Because like half of you seem to be wearing the same thing. The consort is a wonderful person. She has quite a gift. I'm sure she does. The uh, weird bed bubble thing. It's where you have sex with her if you choose to have sex with her. That is close enough, Commander. I've heard a great many things about you since your arrival here in our citadel. What exactly do you do? That depends on your needs. I offer advice to some, comfort to others. I have a certain problem that could use your expertise. Maybe I can help. I have a friend, Septimus, a retired Turian general. I won't discuss the details, but he wanted me to be more than I could be. We had a falling out. Now he spends his days in Korra's den, drinking and spreading lies about me. If you would speak to him as a fellow soldier, I believe he will listen to you and let the matter be. What happened between you? I respect his privacy too much to go into the details. If he wishes to tell you what happened, that is his prerogative. What exactly do you want me to tell him? Appeal to a sense of honor. Remind him of his position as a general. If you can convince him to stop spreading lies about me, I would be very grateful. Now I must ask you to take your leave. I have many clients waiting to see me. That uh, line reading and motion didn't really match, did they? I have to admit I'm a little nervous. Um, where'd go? Up here. I do not know what order I did things in in my original Let's Play. I don't think it was this order. But, uh, it might have been. And we're back at the embassies. This goes to CSEC, right? Yeah. Let's go and meet up with Rex, I guess. So, Williams, 
Are you happy you signed on with Commander Shepard? I'm not sure, Lieutenant. Every time I think I have a handle on things, the universe banks hard to port. Well, don't let anybody know. A big gun and a confident attitude will get you through a lot in life. That is true, I guess. There he is. Witnesses saw you making threats in Fist's bar. Stay away from him. I don't take orders from you. This is your only warning, Rex. You should warn Fist. I will kill him. You want me to arrest you? I want you to try. Go on. Get out of here. Yes, human. I'm trying to bring down Saren. Barla Vaughn said to talk to you. Barla Vaughn is a wise man. We may share a common goal, human. Enlighten me. I've been hired to kill the owner of Korra's den, a man named Fist. He did something very foolish. What'd he do? He betrayed the Shadow Broker. A quarian showed up here on the Citadel. She was on the run. She wanted to trade information for a safe place to hide, so she went to Fist. He promised to arrange a meeting between her and the Shadow Broker. Instead, he contacted Saren. What does Saren have to do with this? Well, the Corian has something that connects Saren to the Geth. He paid Fist a small fortune for her. If we get our hands on that evidence, we can prove that Saren's a traitor. And the Council will have to listen to us. Saren might already have her. Last I heard, Fist still had her. Probably somewhere inside his club. You help me kill Fist, she's all yours. I want to know more about your employer. Can't tell you much. All I got was a coded message with the details of the job. Standard procedure. What about Garrus, that Turian? He wants to take Saren down too. He might come in handy. He was here just before you showed up. Said he was going to follow up a lead on his investigation. Wanted to speak to the doctor at the med clinic. Move out. Um, interesting. I guess you don't really need to talk to the... Uh, the informant if you go to Rex first. Because he tells you where to find Garrus. This is such a spoiler squad screen because it's so obvious you know who these people are going to be. Um, Alright, obviously I want to take Rex with me. And um, I kind of have to take Caden because I want to have make sure I have the decryption and um, electronic stuff. And it likes to not show characters in the <laughs> level up screen. Kind of interesting. Um, let's see. His biotic abilities, like again, most it's mostly throw, lift, and uh, singularity that are super useful. Warp is good, but it's not as much of a help, and he only has throw. Otherwise. Um, let's just spread stuff around a little bit, I guess. When can he equip heavy armor? All the way up there, alright. And we want him to use shotguns, obviously, but you have to put points in assault rifles. Eh, that'll do. Um, where are we exactly? Um, let's just see if we can go. This goes to the docking bay, right? That goes to the Presidium. That's the, where the CSEC procurement officer is. We'll deal with him later. 
want to go to the wards. In light of the recent attack on Eden Prime, many colonial investors are pulling their support for future projects. Proponents of expanded human colonization insist that Eden Prime was an isolated case. Nevertheless, colonist enrollment has dropped sharply. Many colonial proposals are on hold until backers have some reassurance that human colonies will be adequately protected. I'd like a squad raid conversation more than news items like that, unless they give me a mission. Which they sometimes do, as you know. Hey, I know you. You're Shepard, right? I saw the monument at Akuz. They got a whole section about you there. It's a miracle you survived. Looks like you have a fan. I'm sorry, I just never thought I'd meet someone like you in person. Uh, my name's Lang, Officer Eddie Lang, Citadel Security. It's an honor to meet you, Commander. What are you doing down here in the wards? Anything I can help you with? Why'd you join Citadel Security? I don't know. Seemed like the right thing to do, you know? Maybe it's in my blood. My grandfather was a cop back on Earth. It's kind of what CSEC is. Police for the Citadel. I'm still pretty new at it, but I like it so far. Way more interesting than staying back on Earth. You get to meet all kinds of cool aliens. Like those Hanar. Wild. Plus, CSEC gets a lot of respect here. We uphold the law. People, even aliens, appreciate that. How do you like working here on the Citadel? This place is amazing. I've been here almost a year, and I still haven't seen a tenth of it. The Presidium's just so beautiful. Good place to go and relax. But I really like it here down in the wards. There's always something going on somewhere. Like that new club they just opened a few months ago, Flux. Wicked scene in there, Commander. You should check it out when you have some time. What do you know about Spectres? Just the stuff they show in the vids. They always make them out to be super agents on secret missions to save the galaxy. I know it's not really like that, though. Some of the other CSEC guys don't like them too much. Figure they shouldn't be able to operate outside the law. But if they were so bad, the Council wouldn't use them, right? Um... Well... I think it is kind of like that. Do you know a CSEC officer named Harkin? I shouldn't really say too much. He's been on the force a lot longer than me. But I've heard things, you know? Drinking on the job, taking bribes, that kind of thing. Rumors mostly, but they suspended him, so some of it must be true. I have to go. Right. You're probably real busy. Well, see you around, Commander. Codex. six hours and we only saw one-tenth of the ship. I even got to meet the commander. Matriarch Ladanya? You met her? Well, she addressed everyone on the tour, but I got pretty close to her. Huh, just look at that ship. You'd have to be stupid to mess with that. Very true. She's got all ship doesn't actually seem to be here. The rest of the Asari fleet combined. Hopefully she'll never need to use it. I think she will. Alright, I don't know where it is though. It's kinda weird. Um, I think there is a keeper back here. Plus we want to go here. Cause this is where Garrus is. What is that noise they make? Kinda weird. They're falling behind, Rex. I didn't tell anyone, I swear. That was smart, Doc. Now if Garrus comes around, you stay smart. Keep your mouth shut or we'll... Who are you? Let her go. Ah! All right, go time. Oh. I think 
we physics him to death. Forget if Overload really does much. Uh, we don't have shields. Oh, there's the one guy who always likes to stay back there. There you go. All targets down. Good job. Perfect timing, Shepard. Gave me a clear shot at that bastard. What were you thinking? You could have hit the hostage. There wasn't time to think. I just reacted. I didn't mean to... Dr. Michelle, are you hurt? No, I'm okay. Thanks to you. All of you. I know those men threatened you, but if you tell us who they work for, we can protect you. They work for Feast. They wanted to shut me up. Keep me from telling Garrus about the Quarian. The one I told you about, Shepard. She must be able to link Saren to the Geth. There is no way the Council can ignore this. Time we paid Fist a visit. This is your show, Shepard. But I want to bring Saren down as much as you do. I'm coming with you. You're a Turian. Why do you want to bring him down? I couldn't find the proof I needed in my investigation, but I knew what was really going on. Saren is a traitor to the Council and a disgrace to my people. Welcome aboard, Garrus. Fist is going to be waiting for us. When we hit him, we better hit him hard. Like I said earlier, you don't have to. Um, I recruit Garrus and Rex, but why would you not? They're like the best characters. Um, along with Tali, obviously. And Liara, fine. They're basically everybody who's not human. It's weird, like I'm used to leveling up much more often. It just does not want to load the characters. Um, you need to unlock sniper rifles at some point. Actually, you need... Um, oh, you need a lot of points in first aid for him to unlock. Electronics, that's kind of annoying. Um, let's do at least make sure we have that then. It's just the most important thing to have, in my opinion, is to get the electronics and decryption. And if I'm using Garrus for that, then that's where his points are going to go right now. First aid is useful anyway. I never properly thanked you for saving me from Fist's thugs, Commander. I don't know what would have happened if you hadn't been there. I'm just glad you weren't hurt. Me too. Now, was there anything you needed? You're a doctor. How did you end up here on the Citadel? My parents brought me here when I was young. My father was a medic with the Alliance. I chose to keep the medical tradition alive, but not the military. Fixing up wounded soldiers isn't my idea of fun. Let me take a look at what you have for sale. Of course. Kind of different than... Uh, uh, Dr. Chakras, I guess since she really wants to help soldiers. this These things are the most important things in the game for somebody who is not... Um, who doesn't regenerate their health by themselves, so if they're usually worth buying, I can't afford this one. I'll buy this one. Hello? Fine, I'll double click to buy. Oh, you need to click accept. accept. This is not the buy button. This is the category button. All right. Well, double clicking worked. And uh, we can get a manager replenished, which I don't need right now. Um, I should really probably also give them something 
they're both still using this because they're they haven't put any points into their actual weapon. Um, one of you can get the shield regenerator, I guess. All right. Um, I think that's enough for now. We'll continue in the next video.